All right, everybody. Welcome to Two Takes with Alex and Tate. I know it has been a while. We hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. We still have New Year's Eve coming up. This is recorded on right after the USC game for those of you that are USC, you know, fans or follower followers or haters maybe, you know, like anyone that who knows when the USC game is. This is the morning also before the OU game. So we have the end of the NFL season coming up the last two weeks. We have the college football playoff coming up. We are getting more and more into the NBA season now as the, you know, as the NBA season progresses, some of the MVP race is becoming more clear. I think we're starting to have an idea of who's going to be really, really good come the postseason, you know, and then, uh, number of other things you know obviously a lot has happened in the nfl we're going to get into all of this alex what do you want to start with today or do you have anything you want to say before we kind of jump into the sports talk well i just hope everybody had a very nice holiday season um and you know here's hoping that 2024 isn't like a train wreck like a few of the past few years have been uh but no it's been it's been good i've i've find myself down here in charleston south carolina got a concert later on this afternoon with my wife pretty excited very fun, very fun. yeah it's going to be a lot of fun but I no had a great I, time going to texas and seeing some some family out there you know and yeah it's i know that means 2020 is four years ago now if for if the case people forgot or whatever forgot how linear time works it's like it is really, <laughs> that does not feel like four years ago to me but you know alas here we are for the three-year-olds listening to the podcast <laughs> 24 minus 20 equals four <laughs> yep. thank you alex for the math lesson of the day should be for that so all right tate what i'm thinking for today because it's been so long and because our five listeners are have just been begging for content right we are <laughs> we are going to give a rundown of most everything that's happened so this is a big holiday extravaganza for everybody listening this is going to be a big one so what i'm thinking let's just run down these divisions and talk hey. about all of the craziness that has happened uh let's go ahead and start with the afc uh pretty interesting stuff happening right now oh absolutely yeah let's uh, let's go with some nfc east or afc east excuse me afc east let's talk about these these dolphins okay so the dolphins obviously coming off a big win against the dallas cowboys if you watch that game, what the Dolphins did really, really well, and where I want to give them some credit, is they ran the ball right at that Dallas Cowboy defense line, which is known as one of the strengths of the defense. But the way the Cowboys have built their team and how they like to play is from ahead. They like to get out with the lead. They like to be able to run a behind their own offense line, the Dallas Cowboys, and then their defense line and really defense as a whole is meant to cover well and then rush the passer with guys obviously like Michael Parsons, Lawrence. You know, we have really, really good pass rushing defense alignment. Where we have seen the Cowboys struggle, especially of late, is teams that can run the ball right at them. Uh, but two AFC East teams actually that we'll talk about the Bills and the Dolphins. I both I thought both did an excellent job of exploiting the Cowboys' biggest weakness in that game. You know, uh, with the Dolphins, I don't know if I think they are a true Super Bowl contender, but I was thinking about it, and this is you know we're winging this a little bit today, but. If something were to happen to Baltimore, who's the other team you like in the AFC right now, though? I think the Dolphins would, you know, just kind of by process of elimination would have to be considered one of the contenders in the league, at least in the AFC, because there's not a lot of teams ahead of them that I like, you know. And so I think the Dolphins are flawed. I think they have 
a ceiling at quarterback with Tua. You know, I think he's playing really, really well, but I don't think anyone thinks he's this true difference maker with this great ceiling like Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes or even like a Jalen Hurts to me, or, you know, we'll talk about Lamar Jackson here in a second, but I don't think they quite have that ceiling, but they have a great coach. I love Mike McDaniel. I think that he does an excellent job putting his players in positions where they can succeed, especially to a, he runs that offense right to his strengths. They have obviously Tyree kill is a huge magnetic force for defenses where they have to play him a certain way, which opens things up for the other skill players that they have that I really like, you know, they have Mostert who's had, just an awesome season you know 20 plus touchdowns at this point one of the the best seasons I can remember by kind of a running back in his 30s that hadn't really had an elite level season before I mean it's really pretty special I think what Mostert's doing given his previous success and his age I think it's really cool the way they're using him and how much success he's been able to have their rookie running back, A-Chan, is one of the biggest home run hitters at running back we have in the league right now. One of the fastest guys I've ever seen, you know, including, you know, I, the play, there was a play this season where I was watching the Dolphins and Tyree caught like a little slant route and ran it into the end zone. And A-Chan caught up with him. And I was like, man, that's Tyree Kill. Like that running back must be just super fast to be able to you know not get burned so they have him and then Jalen Waddle on the other side you know also can take the top off of defense and the way they use all those guys with the motion and the scheme that they run I think is just really really effective and if they were to somehow get the one seed which is still very much on the board they play the Ravens this week who is the other team that's you know, should be the favorite to be the one seed at this point. It would be hard to go to Miami and win a playoff game. Now, I don't like them near as much if they have to go on the road to Baltimore, but if Baltimore had to go to Miami twice in four games or whatever it ended up being, that's a pretty big ask. And now I like Baltimore. We'll get into them here in a sec, but I think they should be the favorite to win the Super Bowl today. I think beating a good team on the road twice, especially in that short amount of time, is a big ask. I think that would be really, really challenging. And so if Miami could pull the upset or maybe, you know, something, eh, if Baltimore wins, they're a lock for the one seed. But, you know, if they could somehow pull off a win this week and get the one seed, I think that'd be tough. And I think they're a hard out for anybody in the AFC. And I expect them to win a playoff game. We'll have to see how kind of the, wild card weekend falls but there's no one that's going to be the five six or seven seed in the AFC that I like more than Baltimore or more than Miami and I think moving forward they should feel really really good about their coach pretty good about their quarterback and you know the defense playing at a high level uh which brings me kind of the next team in that division Buffalo who here's what I'll say about Buffalo they're the wild card team I would not want to play. And that may be kind of obvious, but the way they ran the ball against the Cowboys and James Cook this last week, notwithstanding, has really been on a heater, which I remember when Aaron Rodgers won his Super Bowl. They had a guy named Stark in the backfield. who was like a, a rookie, maybe a second year guy out of a small college who just kind of got hot. And you see that more frequently with quarterbacks but running backs and other positions can get into a rhythm too and when a running back gets hot to go with an elite level quarterback like Josh Allen or obviously Aaron Rodgers that ended up winning that Super Bowl I think that is a scary thing to face when you're an opposing team come the playoffs because running the ball we know is really really effective the later in the season it gets the weather gets a little cold teams aren't going to be able to throw the ball quite as efficiently. So the running game becomes really important. The Bills have what I would call a good defense. I don't know that they have a great defense, but they have a good enough defense if the offense is playing well, you know, to scare folks and win a couple of playoff games, I think. 
And then Josh Allen, you just don't know what you're going to get with him week to week. But if he's good, he's great. (laughs) If he's on kind of the upswing, where if you're asking me, do I think the Bills and Josh Allen could get hot and upset Baltimore, even in the AFC or the Dolphins on the road in the first round of the playoffs? Absolutely. And that's that's the wild card team that I absolutely would not want to play because they have one of the highest ceilings in the NFL this season. And I mean that including San Francisco, including Baltimore, including Philly, anybody else that you can name. I think the Bills have about as high of a ceiling when they're playing well as anybody. And to go back to the Cowboys, you know, when the Bills played the Cowboys, Josh Allen was like 7 of 15 for 95 yards, I think, in that game. That's as scary as you can be as, as a Bills fan to me where you can dominate a game where Josh Allen doesn't complete 10 passes. I think that is terrifying to play against where, cause we know he can make a couple of wow plays when they need him to. We know he can run the ball effectively when they need him to. We know he can do all these sorts of different things that really, really put a lot of pressure on a defense. And when they don't have to ask him to do that, you know, over and over and over again throughout the course of the game, what that does is eliminate some of his opportunity for the key mistakes, I think, which has been his kind of kryptonite as an NFL quarterback, basically. He's led the league in interceptions. However, whatever time you want to put on, you know, Josh Allen, who's leading the, the league in turnover since X date, it's going to be Josh Allen since he came in the league, you know. And so if they can scheme their offense and game plan or to help him out where he's not put in as many positions to make those kind of critical errors. I think it bodes really well for Buffalo moving forward. We were both low on Buffalo going into the season, you know, with the burrow injury and some other things. Now with all that being said, the bills got some work to do before they make the playoffs. I think most people at this point think they're going to, I think they're going to go ahead and make the playoffs, but would I be stunned if they lost to New England and then the Dolphins and, you know, were the last team out? No. Would I be stunned if they made the AFC championship game? No. So they really have the widest range of outcomes almost in the NFL to me. But like I said, they are the team in the AFC East or the wild card team in the AFC that I definitely would not want to play if I was hosting a playoff game th- this season. All right. I got I got sure. something to say. Sure. Um, Tate's gonna tear one, just burn it through this division real quick, and and then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna be left collecting my thoughts. Okay, <clears throat> so touched on a, a few things. I do I do like the Dolphins. I I like that their defense has stepped up this late in the season. They've been really we, good when Jalen Ramsey came back. They've been really good on defense since he's come back, which we've been saying has been like the the big Achilles heel of of this Dolphins team um I I I want so where I'm from out west right we have a lot of this rock it's called pyrite you ever heard pyrite Tate I'm sure you have yeah because I can point it out to you but I definitely heard it yeah (laughs) So it, it was a fun little Christmas gift that we would give each other, like the, the old guys would give each other uh, back in the day. It's also known as fool's gold. Okay. Yeah. You, that you is see, ringing a bell. Yeah. You had, a, you had like a great uncle that gave you fool's gold for Christmas and, and you were like pumped about it probably at one time in your life. Uh, this Bill's team is the definition of fool's gold for me because you're you're 100 right that like yeah you know getting your running back james cook on it on a little bit of a heater is great yeah. and like your defense stepping up like limiting the ways an offense can hurt you that's great and josh allen he looks like gold looks like it he but looks, he looks good you know <laughs> to the untrained eye pyrite looks like gold right what (laughs) what happens whenever you take a closer look is you say well i think that 
you know, Josh Allen has this tendency of whatever he feels like it needs to be hero ball time. That's where he's going to make the mistakes. And uh, I'm sorry, but if you show me a quarterback who doesn't think that playing in the playoffs is hero ball time, I mean, that's not an NFL quarterback. All of them have that that gene that's like, no, I'm going to. I'm going to go make this play. I'm going to lead this team. And that's where the danger of Josh Allen in the playoffs really becomes apparent because we've seen him put up stinkers. Let me clarify what I, because I don't necessarily disagree with you. Are the Bills the scariest wild card team to me? Absolutely. Do I trust the Bills? enough to win three playoff games on the road in a row i do not just to clarify that's why i said i i don't think they're a real super bowl contender because i don't think they can play three good games in a row you know and there's a team in the nfc we'll talk about that i feel similarly to but uh the bills i don't think are really legit contenders because i don't think they're consistent enough to string together three road playoff games and win them all you know yeah and but moving could they ruin someone's season in the first round of oh, course yeah absolutely could they go to anybody that's not you know like baltimore is going to be the one seed that's just let's assume that i you know it's not a given obviously but if baltimore is the one seed could they go to any other team and beat them in the first round of the playoffs 100 percent to me you know it's i, I would be as Chiefs, you know, I'd be scared if I was the Chiefs of Buffalo was coming to town. And I love the Chiefs, and they've owned Buffalo, but it's still, they are a scary team for a weekend, you know? That's that that's a good point. But you mentioned uh, I, I somebody ruining, ruining somebody's season. Right. We have that opportunity with the next team, the New England Patriots. The, the Patriots... I thought it was so funny, man, when they beat the Broncos, because it's like, you know, what are you rooting for right now as a Patriots fan? Like, are you kind of pissed that they won a game? Because now you're probably not going to, you're definitely not going to get Caleb Williams now. Are you going to be able to get Drake May still? Maybe you may have to trade another pick for him. Is it kind of nice to see Bailey Zappi come in and win a game? Yeah, it's probably kind of nice. So it's like, I'd be really torn as a New England fan. And I think they're going to go a whole different direction as a franchise this offseason. I don't believe Bill Belichick is going to be there as the head coach next season. I think I like him going to Washington or the Chargers. I think either fit Washington would be a little more of, complete control the chargers would be you know for obvious reasons they got good defensive pieces i think if bill belichick was coaching that defense they would be elite and they have the quarterback you know and a lot of the times you put if a defensive coach is going to succeed in the nfl now we've talked a lot about defense coaches this year you put them with a great quarterback and that's where the recipe is you know and i think justin herbert you know you get an offense coordinator in there that you like whether it be kellen moore or even Josh McDaniels comes back as Belichick's offense coordinator and they go to San Diego, you know, the Chargers together. Uh, I think that could be really, really, I think it could work. You know, I, I really like Belichick in some other spots, but I think it's just run its course in New England. I think they need to, in the AFC particularly, go more of an offensive direction, especially if they're going to draft a young quarterback. And we have seen defensive coaches and young quarterbacks typically do not work. You know, look at what's going on in Pittsburgh or Chicago. You know, there's examples that we see where defensive-minded coaches and young quarterbacks do not work. Typically, it takes a veteran quarterback for defenses, defensive coaches to succeed. So uh, I think in New England, it's just time for a change. And I think Belichick, I think there's going to be some sort of mutual parting of ways, whether it be a trade or, you know, whatever. Because uh, I do think you could get some draft compensation for Belichick from the Chargers or for Washington, you know, moving forward, which would be good for New England because they have a lot of work to do on the roster, you know, not just at the quarterback position, but definitely including the quarterback position 
if they don't get Caleb Williams, I do like Drake May still. I like the the Heisman winner out of LSU, Jaden Daniels. I think really, really could be a good NFL player. And then I've been talking to everybody. I don't know if this would quite be worth a top five pick, but it might, you know, if you like them, we'll see what his draft day. I like Michael Penix out of Washington. I think he throws the best ball coming into the draft, maybe even including Caleb Williams. He's a pretty athletic guy. He certainly was before he had the knee injuries, but he still moves well enough in today's NFL. That has to be part of the game. And I think playing in the cold weather cities and that part of the country, you need kind of a big arm, big quarterback. I think Michael Penix could be a good fit for New England. Um or, you know, the other kind of option for him would be bringing in a veteran like Kirk Cousins, you know, using that draft pick maybe on Marvin Harrison Jr., bringing in Kirk Cousins, trading your second round pick for Justin Fields and bringing in an offensive coach like Ben Johnson, the offense coordinator for the Lions, who I think is going to be one of the top head coaching hires and candidates this offseason, maybe including Jim Harbaugh if he decides to go to the pro from Michigan, you know. So New England, they have some work to do because of their draft pick. And just, I trust the owner and the organization to end up making smart decisions. You know, Belichick, uh, you know, the personnel side of the game has passed him by, but I would be feeling pretty optimistic if I was New England. And then lastly in that division, the Jets, just anyone that's saying Aaron Rodgers could play this season if they're in contention he just wasn't gonna play he said it himself it wasn't realistic for him to play this season and i don't know if who just popped their acl uh anyway those are nine month injuries at least and this idea that aaron Rodgers was going to play in a professional tackle football game this season three months after an achilles tear just wasn't gonna happen and it's like, my, my question would be, if he's really ready to play, why doesn't he play? Because if the goal is to win a Super Bowl with the New York Jets, don't you think it would be good to get some in-game reps with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall? I'm sure that would be beneficial going into the next season. You know, you come in, you get a couple in-game, you know. Patrick Mahomes' rookie year, they let him come in and start the last game because they wanted him to get some in-game refs with the receivers and, you know, see who, what it was going to be like the next year. And I think if the argument is he's ready to play, they're just out of contention, that's just a bunch of BS because it would be good for them for him to play so the receivers could get to know how he calls things at the line of scrimmage, how the ball leaves his hands. You know, I think that would start building the chemistry going into the next year which just means he wasn't going to play. And it means this season was a little bit of a disaster for the Jets. I think that they had no other backup plan besides Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle, who neither one of them are NFL quarterbacks to me, you know, and looking at Cleveland with Joe Flacco, you know, Joe Flacco was on that team last year. And it's like Cleveland may win a damn playoff game with Joe Flacco as soon as Aaron Rodgers for his ace, his Achilles they should have called him and been like hey man Joe you know what do you have going on this year do you want to come start for us in a couple of weeks you know you already know the play you know I think that they didn't make any sort of move at that position post Aaron Rodgers injury was basically just punting on the year and trying to, in a way, delay the pressure of everybody's job. And I think Sala is basically like, hey, we, you know, we had it this year. We just, you know, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. We didn't have a good backup quarterback. I think was a way for everyone to kind of push the hot seat off for one season where if they come out next year in our bad and Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I think there's going to be a lot of changes coming in for the jets. But, uh, you know, in particular, I think this season was just, you know, nothing. The record even looks better to me than the, the season went, you know, they're six and nine right now. In some ways, I think that's almost worse. They won some games because they could have drafted higher, you know, and they have, 
plenty of holes on the roster still as much as you like some of the young players. Garrett Wilson's awesome. Sauce Gardner is awesome. Brees Hall is awesome. They need about everything else. They need a pass rusher probably. They need definitely more offense alignment. They probably need another weapon outside of Garrett Wilson, you know, for, to throw the ball to. None of the other guys they have on the team are really – different makers or playmakers at receiver you know so they if i was you know gonna rank who should be the least optimistic in the afc east i feel like the jets should be it i think next season they're gonna still have similar issues i think you're gonna have a 40 year old quarterback coming off an achilles injury who's gonna be better but i watching that team this year i don't think i don't know that they would have made the playoffs with aaron Rodgers playing they would have been probably close and they would have been right in the same kind of hunt that Buffalo's in right now. And they maybe would have made the wild card, but they weren't going to be better than the dolphins. I can say that, you know, they weren't going to be as good as the dolphins this year, you know? So I don't think, you know, they're looking at going on the road for every round of the playoffs with a 39 year old quarter, you know, quarterback and no offensive line. It's like, that would have been a big ask and thinking that Aaron Rodgers was going to stay healthy and play, 17 games and all the playoff games behind that offensive line. It's unlucky a little bit that he tore his Achilles literally, but I don't think he was going to stay healthy the whole year, regardless of what kind of injury it was. Yeah. That offensive line has been just atrocious. Like why would you go spend assets bringing on all of air Rogers buddies? Right. If none of them can protect him. But Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, Yeah, I think that we're going to see a Jets that probably underwhelmed next year. And I was really high on the Jets this year. I yeah. loved the Jets. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? I think it's going to be underwhelming next year. And uh, that's, that's a pretty sad thing. Mm-hmm. What I will say about the Patriots, is never underestimate Bill Belichick's uh, propensity for being petty. Yeah, I, oh. <laughs> that's what I thought you were gonna like, say. if he can, if he can ruin the Buffalo Bills season, he's going to do everything and, possible. And if he can ruin the Bills season <laughs> and sidebar ruin the Patriots <laughs> draft, day, he's meant to both, you know, two birds with one stone. Right? <laughs> like, I'm sure there's nothing more Bill Belichick would like than winning the last two games and making sure they don't get. Caleb Williams or Drake May, you know, maybe not even the third quarterback off the board and then skip it down. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we're, yeah. We're running three team seasons and then 10. <laughs> See you later. You know? <laughs> Love it. Destroy, destroy the Patriots, uh, uh, entire roster. Like it, it's almost like a sabotage at this point. <laughs> Just right. like leave them with nothing be a terrible gm for years <laughs> and yeah, leave you know, another afc team <laughs> last just one more if there was a universe i thought that existed where bill belichick would surrender the personnel decisions to somebody else in new england could i do i think he could turn around new england if they brought in a real gm yeah, I do. I still think he's a really good game day head coach, but I just don't see that happening. And that's why everyone's going to part ways. And he needs to go to, you know, like I said, the Chargers or maybe Washington with a real GM where he can coach the defense and, you know, do the things that he's still really, really great at, not just good. He's still an elite level defense of mind, if not the best defense of mind in the NFL still, you know. Yeah. He for just, sure you just can't bring in players you know so that's exactly right all right well it's that time afc, AFC north. north okay so let's start with cincinnati to start let's work let's work our way up on this one cincinnati what we saw with jake browning i think is a lot of fun and people get a little bit ahead of themselves with some of these backup quarterbacks and I think it's great stories. I think it's Josh Dobbs. When Josh Dobbs comes in from Minnesota and lights it up for two or three games, it's like, oh, man, he's great. Is he, like, actually a starting quarterback in the NFL? Like, who would you rather have, Josh Dobbs or, 
you know, our guy Baker Mayfield or Derek Carr or some, you know, some of these kind of veteran starting quarterbacks. It's like maybe he gets a job somewhere. Maybe Jake Browning is actually the 25th best quarterback in the league. He, they've just been sitting on a gym and he's been grooming under Joe Burrow. When teams start getting tape on these guys, we see them come back, come back down to earth. And now it takes – the amount of time that it takes for that to happen can vary from situation to situation and from player to player. And sometimes it depends on the defenses they're playing to, but there's reason Josh Dobbs was traded three times in a year. There's reason Jake Browning hadn't had an opportunity since what, you know, since he played at I think Washington or Washington's, you know, no, he played in the PAC 12, but, uh, you know, there's just a reason these guys aren't starters usually. And it's fun when they come in for a little bit. It's kind of like getting an interim head coach sometimes. It can give the team a boost. Some I think a lot, like pretty frequently what we see is the rest of the roster will kind of up their level of production and play with a little more sense of urgency because it's like, oh, man, we got Jake Browning and not Joe Burrow. I better be on my shit today. You know, it's like I better be playing my best football so that way we don't miss Joe Burrow as bad. And I think you see these guys rally around the backup quarterbacks, but once that sort of effect fades after a couple of weeks, and like I said, guys get tape on them and the NFL is just so hard, man. It's like, it really takes a really special player to be a longtime starter in the NFL, especially at quarterback. And I think it's, when we talk about some of these backups that come in and look good for a couple games, it almost kind of undervalues what even someone who's having a terrible season, but what Derek Carr has been able to do in his career, which is start for a long time, produce at a pretty good level for a half decade or something like that. You know, I think it kind of undersells what they're able to do week in and week out and the preparation it takes and the natural ability to read defenses and throw the ball, you know? So the Bengals, Unfortunately, just got the short end of the stick. I think they're probably going to miss, end up missing the playoffs. You know, I think they lose at least one more game, finish nine and eight, which is pretty good without Joe Burrow, you know, being healthy, but for about three or four games this season. And then they have some decisions to make in the off season, but assuming Burrow comes back and can finally get a healthy season under his belt and maybe a full off season, they should be very optimistic moving forward because anyone that has a top two quarterback in the NFL should be optimistic almost every year, you know? And that's where I, how I would feel is the Bengals. Unfortunately, they're probably not going to be able to keep Jamar Chase and T Higgins, but in the NFL now, you know, you draft a receiver in the first or second round, maybe even second or third round, and you likely can find someone to kind of supplement some of that production that he brings. Now he's a, a real receiver one to me. I think he's a top 15 receiver in the league, give or take, you know, maybe top 20, but he's a, he's a one. And I think wherever he goes, whether it be Kansas city or new England, you know, this, these teams that are kind of missing some receiver production, I think he's going to be really, really good, but he's not even the best receiver on his own team. And Jamar chase is going to be awesome. I think they have a young running back that I like, Chase Brown, and, you know, they, they should be really, really good move forward kind of each year. I'd keep building the offensive line, but just, you know, you got the guy, and that's the hard part. So, you know, it's kind of sucks when he gets injured for a year, but Tom Brady missed a season, and then they came back and won three more Super Bowls, I'm pretty sure. So it's like, you know, that's where you're at with Joe Burrow this season. Moving on, Pittsburgh – you know, it's a weird thing with Pittsburgh because I don't know that Tomlin is going to be a guy that can get them over the top, but he's also not bad enough to fire. And it's it'd be really, really hard to justify firing him and moving on to an offensive-minded head coach. But at the same time, the offense is just ugly to watch. And, you know, that's not his side of the ball. The defense is good, but they're just an eyesore. And they're not a fun team to watch. And it's just a weird situation if you're Pittsburgh. You know, I just think it's a it's hard to know exactly what to do with that team. Because do I think with Kenny Pickett and Tomlin, they're ever going to sniff an AFC championship game? Absolutely not. Are they going to be bad enough to really 
move on from either one. Probably Kenny Pickett at some point, but I think he's probably going to be their starter next year. And I think Tomlin's going to be there for a while. And I think that's going to leave them in kind of this no man's land, middle of the pack in the NFL, where you're not ever going to be bad enough to really go draft an elite quarterback and replace Pickett. But at the same time, you know, you're not really going to be on the other end of the spectrum ever either, you know. So what do you what do you think about Pittsburgh before I move on? Because I know you have your ear to the ground out there. What do people think about Pittsburgh? What what do you think? About the season and moving forward, how, how do you feel? Where's your level of optimism at with them? Uh, <clears throat> it's it's an interesting one because at times the defense can look exceptionally dominant, and yeah. at times they just get burnt. It, it's it's really weird to see that, especially whenever you think about the pieces that they have on defense, like spearheaded yeah. by by Watt, who's like right. Awesome. insane right he's, he's, maybe, he's a, maybe a hall of famer yeah like yeah for, yeah for but you just you 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 want pittsburgh to be better than they are because you know that their baseline is just good yeah. and so it's so frustrating i think that naji harris i love naji but i i do think that he's not quite the the level that we all assumed he would be i think uh, it would be a lot better somewhere else is what i think about Najee. where it's like i don't think it's working in pittsburgh with him like i'll give you a team could the dallas cowboys use Najee harris as kind of the feature back to go with pollard 100 percent, and i think that would be really effective and really good is kind of the goal line back down there you know it's like there's some teams that could use Najee. I think he'd be better somewhere else, but it hadn't worked in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I, Kenny Pickett is, it's the exact same. I think Kenny Pickett, if you watch one of his games, it's the encapsulation of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is, you know, the baseline is pretty good. Right. And sometimes it can ramp up like really quickly like we've seen we've talked about fourth right. quarter fourth quarter kenny is just like yeah a totally different player from the rest of the th- three quarters and that's what the steelers are is like if they can get one kind of game starting off rolling they look like they're able to go anywhere and be anybody but they're just so inconsistent and the bats are bad that I think, yeah, yeah, I think it might be time to move on from Tomlin. Tomlin might, it might be time for him to go somewhere else. Also, um, it's, I don't think Pickett's really going to work out as a a starter in the NFL. I think he probably gets another season, but I don't think he really kind of makes a big enough splash to next year. Um, So that, that kind of sucks for them. But there is one thing that I wanted to mention, and I brought this up I want to say like eight or nine weeks ago, Joe Burrow, I I agree. Number two quarterback right behind Patrick Mahomes. Like that's where he stands. At what point is his injury history a liability? Oh, it's getting very close to that point. Yeah. Where he's almost never put together a, a full healthy season. Even the year they won the Super Bowl, if people don't remember, he was hurt in training camp that year, and they started off really slow because of it. I think they were 10 and 7 in the regular season that year. Obviously got hot, went to the Super Bowl. But at some point in Cincinnati, you want to have a home playoff game. And you don't don't want to have to be the wild card every year in that tough in that brutal division. So yeah, I think it's already a factor. And you know, we'll see if he can finally kind of put together some, you know, a a healthy season next year, but it's, you know, to give you a cross sports example, it's obviously not this bad, but like when we think about Kawhi Leonard, that's the first thing that comes to mind is, well, the guy was awesome, but he just couldn't stay healthy. And, you know, if you're Joe Burrow, you don't want to get into that category. You want to put together some, some healthy seasons. And like I said, try to put together a full off season, you know, really, really work on your body in this off season. I'm sure he's doing that already having some time off, but yeah, I, I think it's a, 
bigger issue maybe than people want to admit with him already. You know, especially if I was a Cincinnati fan, I wouldn't want to think about it that much and think about it like that. But it has been an issue for him basically every year where if you look at last season, you know, if that game had been in Cincinnati instead of at Arrowhead in the playoffs, you know, they want to, they won't lost by two points on a last second field goal. You know, is that is home field advantage worth two points according to the bets, you know, and according to Vegas, it is. So, you know, I think, like I said, I think it's a bigger concern maybe than people even want to admit with Joe Burrow. Cause he's such a likable guy and such a great player when he's out there, you know, I mean, he's awesome when he's out there, but I, I mean, the game he played against San Francisco this year, I was like, oh, is he going to come in and win the MVP by the end of the year? You know, and obviously got hurt and didn't. Yeah. You know, well, not, not things to think about. Uh, let's hear some about the Browns and the Ravens. So, yeah, the Browns are just. You know, they probably ought to try to move off from Deshaun Watson this offseason. It looks like to me, I think Flacco is a fun story. The way that team's built. Is it's honestly impressive how they put that roster together. You know, Stefanski, I really like him as a coach. You know, I don't know that it was his decision probably to bring in Deshaun. Uh, but, you know, whether or not they moved on from Baker, it's fine. I, I think that's going to end up being one of the worst trade deals in NFL history. You know, just side note real quick. Three of the worst trades in sports history I remember have all happened within the last season and a half, you know, two seasons, which is Deshaun Watson, you know, the – Wealth of first round picks they surrendered and the contract fully guaranteed, I think is a disaster right now. Russell Wilson, we haven't talked about yet, got benched for and you know, his extension hasn't even started yet and he got benched. So it's like that's a that's a he, he looks like a really, really horrible trade. And then you know, the last one, you don't want to be too harsh on a guy this young, no pun intended. Br- Bryce Young, I think that's just a disaster for Carolina. And I think that's something they're not going to get over for about five years, is that trade. Because I, I don't think they are going to have the pieces to put around a new quarterback. Bryce Young doesn't look like the guy to me. I don't think he's a starter in the NFL. And when you look at what they gave up, you know, DJ Moore, Caleb Williams, and additional picks for Bryce Young, I mean, you you kind of, like I said, you almost hate to say it because he's, you always root for these young guys. You always root for these young quarterbacks. You want to see them succeed. That just looks, seems like almost the worst of the bunch to me, honestly, because it was an unknown commodity with such red flags. And it's kind of adding, it's another kick in the stomach a little bit. When you look at the guy that went right after him in CJ Stroud, who looks like a freaking superstar, and that you traded all that then took the wrong guy is just bad, man. And the Carolina, we have been talking about the level of optimism. Carolina's fans, it's about as bad as it gets out there, where you suck, you don't have your first-round pick, you you don't have additional draft capital, which you desperately need right now. Your best player is Adam Phelan, who's old, who's not going to be your best player probably very much longer. It's just bleak in Carolina right now to me. And probably you're going to give Bryce Young another year and figure out, okay, now we got to draft somebody else. And it's just, like I said, I think that trade put them back five years. And I think that's really sucks if you're a Carolina fan, you know, where it's like. I love know, that this if they, had, if they had McCaffrey. And, yeah, I know I got <clears throat> topic here but if carolina had mccaffrey and dj moore and cj stroud you'd be like oh yeah we're gonna be good and for it for a few years you know and now it's like it's, it's just bad but okay yeah cleveland they're another wild card team that would scare me in the first round because first of all are are they gonna injure one of my key pieces as physical as they play you know as miles garrett gonna sprain my quarterback's ankle or something like that nobody wants to play cleveland in the first round it's like that's not so i don't think they 
could they kind of like Buffalo? I don't expect them to be able to win multiple playoff games with Joe Flacco at quarterback at this point in his career. I like him. I think he's a fun story. And, you know, it's like he's kind of what that offense needs, which is just funny that they went and got Deshaun when it's like that's not even the style of quarterback that Stefanski needs to run that system. You know, they need a or cousins. cousins or Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really good, I think. In that system, just someone that can run play action, you know, not turn it over a ton, make some big time throws down the field. They don't really need a playmaker like Deshaun, who's obviously been just a nutcase since he got there, too. It doesn't seem like he wants to play and really. It's just, you know, that he has this massive cap hit and they're still so good and the defense is still so good and Nick Chubb's not even out there and the running game is still so good. It's just would be, it would be hard to watch this team as a Cleveland Browns fan think, man, we went out and got Sean Watson. He's not even playing and we're, just, they just look like a quarterback away still. And they tried to go do it and it's like we ended up being the worst deal possible. And it just looks like they need, Kirk Cousins would probably put them in the legit contender category to be, you know, as a team that I would think could actually win the Super Bowl, you know. And what's funny, is, yeah, he would have been available too. It's like if they had, yeah. they could have went and got Kirk Cousins instead of Paul Watson. Now he obviously got hurt, you know, but so they didn't need that, you know, they didn't need the highest paid quarterback in the league. They needed a good one, you know, and they were available and they had some options so i mean just really frustrating as a browns fan to watch this team and then lastly baltimore is good man and we've both been somewhat skeptical of them all season they are damn good i thought both from a team standpoint and an individual standpoint being lamar jackson it was the most impressive performance of the season anyone's had against san francisco both as an individual being Lamar Jackson. I think he won the MVP. And we'll, 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 I'll save the, the Niners for the NFC side. But I think Lamar won the MVP, you know, in San Francisco. And I think the Ravens should almost be favored over the field to win the Super Bowl right now. Now, that puts a lot of pressure on Baltimore because there's kind of an element of, if it's not going to be this year, when is it going to happen for him? Because the Chiefs obviously look vulnerable. We hadn't talked about them yet. Nobody else in the AFC, I think, is on the same class as far as coach, physicality, quarterback, playmaker. You know, I don't think anyone in the AFC is on the same level. And they just went and kicked the shit out of the best team in the NFC, frankly. You know, I mean, they just embarrassed them. And the Niners were clearly looked at as the best team in the NFC before that game probably still are. I mean, they've creamed the other good teams in the NFC, you know, the Niners have, but I, I think if Baltimore can get through the AFC, they should be pretty heavily favored in the Super Bowl because Lamar is just different. And I know you live out there, so you probably watch more of his games because we don't always get him on TV here, you know. And if it's been a few weeks since you've seen Lamar Jackson play a full game, and I watched the game before the Niners game and was talking to my family about this over the holidays, but you for you forget how different he looks than anybody else you've seen play in the NFL. Just the speed, the escapability. He's got a lot of arm talent too. You know, like he has historically missed some layups and I think hadn't been good at all of the throws, but he's definitely improved. And I like their offense more right now uh, with their new offense coordinator than I have in the past. I think they've kind of helped Lamar get out of the, I'm just going to run to run where a lot of times when he scrambles now, he's keeping his eyes downfield better, which I think is, ju it's just hard for defenses, man. If you're not used to playing him, what do you do against that guy? You know, I mean, he's so much faster. There's no way. And you watch that Niners game. They have one of the best defensive lines in the whole league. And it's like, they're afraid of him. You know, like really, it's like Bosa and Chase Young. It's like they kind of want to rush the passer, 
But at the same time, they know if they rush the passer like they would against other quarterbacks, he's probably going to scramble for 15 yards on you, you know, where you kind of have to stay in your lane and you kind of have to watch what he's going to do. And even then, it's like, okay, then he has time to throw or he can still beat you with his legs because he's just that much faster than everybody else where – Baltimore, I think, looks really, really good. I think they have their coach is awesome and probably gonna win their second Super Bowl. I think, you know, they, like I said, they should be, I think, almost favored over the field to do it to win the Super Bowl. And it's got to be this year, though. You know, it's like that's the only thing that scares you about Baltimore is the pressure is totally on them. You know, at this point after that San Francisco game, where it's like, okay, they've shown they can beat anybody in the league handily and if something happens it really you know other teams probably going to catch up next year with burrow coming back maybe the bills get a little better and the chiefs probably expect to be better next year i think probably almost everybody does to be a little better you know yeah so i i i totally agree with all of that um and i i do think that this is the ravens year and i think it's right that it has to be the ravens year this year and and like you're 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 i mean we we saw what we wanted we <clears throat> we saw lamar jackson we said give him the contract he better start delivering and for his part he's he's done the work so oh, he's gonna come in with mvp and just a side note on that quickly do you remember all the teams this offseason that were like no nah, we're good we don't need lamar jackson teams like I don't know, the Patriots, teams like the Jets, teams like the Falcons, you know? It's like, you know who would be really good if they had Lamar Jackson? <laughs> Everybody would be, anybody that had him would be really good. He's going to win the, oh. the MVP of the league. And there's nine teams that are like, nah, we're okay. We're going we're to run with Desmond Ritter as our quarterback and not go after Lamar Jackson. And if the argument was okay, whatever we match, whatever we offer the Ravens are going to match anyway. If you're like the Jets or the Patriots, wouldn't you have offered him a huge contract so the Ravens then had to pay for the huge contract moving forward? Like, I I was such a, I was so confused by all of that at the time. Why is no one going after Lamar? You know, it's like these quarterbacks everyone needs one and it's like they're not as easy to get as people think you know if you look at yeah. from draft class to draft class how many of them actually end up being longtime starters in the league it's just a low percentage of the elite draft picks the lot you know the high-end first round quarterbacks not all of them and not many of them end up being longtime starters in the nfl and we knew you knew you had one in lamar and all these teams were just <laughs> It was just so stupid to me, man. It's like, I'm sorry. It's like that you wouldn't go after someone that we've seen win a unanimous MVP, win a playoff game, you know, who's just an electric player, who's, you know, very worst going to sell tickets. At best, you're going to be in Super Bowl contention for five years. It's like, I just didn't yeah. get it. And after watching this season, I think there's some guys that need to be fired for not going after Lamar Jackson, who oh, yeah. have other issues anyway but like you know that they were like nah we're, we're gonna roll it like I said, we're, we're like, okay yeah, back yeah it was, it's like man like very very dumb uh, very dumb right. very dumb gming all around the league um all right well let's 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 combo these last two in the afc yeah because we'll, we'll, we'll they we'll, there's not quicker through here uh afc south don't know quite what to make of Jacksonville. You know, uh, Trevor, I think, has been playing hurt, which cost Baker Mayfield the contract. So maybe he just ought to sit down for a couple of weeks until the playoffs so he doesn't put more bad tape out there. But they haven't been as good as I thought they were going to be this season. You know, ever since that ankle injury he suffered, they've lost four in a row, which is no coincidence to me. And like I said, maybe he shouldn't be playing and, you know, but – they're they're not quite as good as I thought. They should be optimistic moving into the next year. I think Doug Peterson's a good coach. I think Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback. I think they have nice pieces. I think with one more draft for Doug Peterson to get his guys, they'll be good next year. I don't know if they'll be great next year, but I think they'll at least be really good next year. Uh, Indianapolis, shout out to Shane Sykin 
for getting that team in the wild card hunt with Gardner Minshew. I mean, they've been one of the best stories in the league, honestly. Gardner Minshew is kind of a fun guy to root for. He does the crazy jean shorts and mullet and mustache, and he lets it rip, and he's kind of fun to watch, you know? And I think they're kind of a fun team to watch. They play pretty good defense some weeks, and some weeks it's a shootout, you know? And Michael Pittman Jr. has been awesome, and, you know, Jonathan Taylor in their running game. A fun team to watch, you know? CJ Stroud and the Texans, kind of like Burrow, it just sucks that guy got hurt, man. It sucks for the whole league that he got hurt. I think it would have been great for the NFL to see a rookie CJ Stroud in the playoffs in the AFC, see what he can do. He was clear cut rookie of the year to me, probably not going to happen now. And it just sucks that he got hurt, you know, and Tank Dell also went down. And it's like the Texans went from being one of the funnest teams to watch in the league to being, you know, a look at the stats after the game kind of team you know but they should feel really good moving forward they have the coach it looks like they obviously have the quarterback they have good draft picks moving forward you know uh if they could add no they won't draft high enough but there'll be some first round receivers they could go add i don't know that they need that as much as they need like offensive line maybe get a pass rusher an additional cornerback you know they they have some places that they could fill out in the roster and i think they're going to be i think they're going to be really really fun for the next few years to watch with cj shroud and what a pick that ended up being by the texans and totally you know they went they decided not to tank on the season one more year and wait on the draft class they went for it they got cj shroud who obviously going to be the best quarterback in that draft class they hit a home run good for the Texans they're gonna be fun moving forward and lastly Tennessee you know it's probably time to move on from Derrick Henry I love Derrick Henry he probably you know we talked about the Cowboys bringing in Najee Harris Derrick Henry would be fun at the Cowboys for a year or two you know Tony Pollard for the Cowboys doesn't look like a feature back you know they kind of need a bruiser Derrick Henry would be fun he'd be he'd probably be kind of fun at the Chiefs though with Pacheco they probably don't need him but the question for the Tennessee is, is Will Levis going to be the guy? He certainly has shown flashes. He got a huge arm. I mean, huge guy, athletic guy. He kind of reminds you of Josh Allen, the way he can run over a linebacker and then throw an 80-yard bomb, you know, in back-to-back plays, which is, you know, the only one other guy comes to mind that can do both those things is Josh Allen. So, you know, we'll see with a full year, Will Levis, what they look like. You know, Vrabel, I think, is an awesome coach. But we know sometimes defensive minds and young quarterbacks don't mesh well. We'll just have to see. You know, I would feel pretty good moving forward as a Tennessee fan. But the other issue they're going to run into is it looks like that division is about to be awesome. You know, I don't think Jacksonville is going anywhere. I don't know that they're going to quite be as – good as I had thought going into the season but you know sometimes that happens with a team where they disappoint one year and then their expectations are lower they come back and light it up the next year uh and then we talked about the Colts we bring in Anthony Richardson you know and they're going to be viable almost no matter who that quarterback is with their coach it looks like and then CJ Stroud and the Texans that's the biggest issue for Tennessee is that division all of a sudden looks like it's going to be brutal moving forward you know, especially if Anthony Richardson's a player at all, where it's going to be tough to win it. And the Titans trying to kind of rebuild in a tough division can be really hard, you know. Uh, so that's the only the biggest negative I see with them. And they kind of need to get younger in some spots, too, with with Will Levis. You know, Derrick Henry, DeAndre Hopkins, maybe time to kind of trade those guys and rebuild with some young pieces for Will Levis. Uh, it, you got anything? On the on the south there, um, no, just disappointed in Trevor Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, um, we were both. And, I I thought he might win MVP, and he's pretty. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. But no, I think I think that's all right. Yeah. I I liked the Derek Henry mention. Yeah, we've seen Father Time finally start to hit. Yeah, which is it's been an incredible run for him, no pun intended, but it's 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 coming about time all right afc west 
Yeah, quickly on Derrick Henry. If you think about the active Hall of Famers in the NFL, there's not <clears throat> as many as the casual fan would think. You know, like, I'll give you an example, and this is someone me and my stepbrother Max talked about over the break. Cooper Cup is not even close to being a Hall of Famer. And most fans would be like, wait, what are you talking about? He had the triple crown one year. Yeah, he's not even that close. There's better receivers than him historically, about four of them that are on the waiting list to get in the Hall of Fame. Cooper Cup, not going to be a Hall of Famer. Devontae Adams might be, but probably isn't. Derrick Henry is going to be a Hall of Famer, and that's pretty cool. You know, it's like he's had an awesome career, you know, oh, yeah. running back. Really, he, he's let's call it what it is real quick, and then we'll go on. He's been the best running back of our generation. Since Adrian Peterson, he's been the best running back, which is pretty cool, man. You know, and, and he's done it for a long time. And still, when he gets out in open field, it's so much faster than you think he's going to be. He's got those strides. And you think a power back like him is just not going to have the top level speed. But when he gets out in open, man, he's the fastest guy on the field, straight line speed, a lot of, you know, almost every week. So really cool. Uh, okay. AFC West. Let's start with the bottom again. So, the Chargers, I said two years ago, they should have fired that coach. They missed the Sean Payton train, which I thought would have been awesome for them. And I think they'd be one of the scariest teams in the league if they had Sean Payton right now. Fortunately, Jim Harbaugh, they may be, he may be coming out at the right time for them to get Jim Harbaugh. And I think the stuff at Michigan really irritated Jim, like kind of the off field dealing with NCAA really irritated him this season where I think he's probably going to be looking to go to the NFL. And if they bring in Harbaugh, you know, to coach Justin Herbert, expect him to be awesome if that happens. And, uh, you know, the other coach I like what we kind of talked about with New England is if Belichick went there and they had, you know, Josh McDaniels, offense coordinator, someone who can call plays, I would think they'd be really, really good then too. Uh, but, you know, they kind of with the, after that Jacksonville game, especially, I thought they should have moved on from Brandon Staley. Obviously the locker room was lost. There's a, you know, there's a rumor kind of scuttlebutt, if you will, that uh, the guys threw the Raiders game to get him fired, which if you watch the game, it's hard to disprove that based on the film. You know what I mean? Like if you actually watch the game, because guys certainly weren't tackling or trying or running to the ball or playing through the whistle or anything like that. So I do kind of buy that actually. Uh, but, you know, half the, the, the equation in the NFL to be great is good coach, good quarterback or great coach, great quarterback. Chargers have half of it. They just got to go get the coach now. And the quarterback, I think, is probably even harder to find. So you got Justin Herbert. There's plenty of reason to be optimistic. You just got to get the right guy in there running the helm, I think. Denver, I want to give Sean Payton a lot of credit because I think if if they had kind of an average NFL head coach, they would have been about a three or four win team this year. But they're going to go, you know, they're, they at least they already won seven games. You know, they may end up getting to eight by the end of the year, may win one of these last two, may even win both of them. Uh, I think he deserves a lot of credit, not quite coach of the year, but kind of the opposite of the Chargers. They have half the equation now, which is Sean Payton. And I think they're going to be really, really good moving forward. I think he's one of the best coaches in the league. And I think it's so funny that Russell Wilson got benched before Baker Mayfield. You know, I know that was like a big, there's a lot of speculation about who was going to kind of make it longer in the season, you know, whether Russ was even going to make it through the whole season. And just so people know, if he gets hurt, actually it's a lot more guaranteed money this off season that they have to pay Russell Wilson. That's why they're going to go ahead and bench him. And it also almost definitely means that they're going to try to move off him this off season. Now, if they cut or trade him, I believe it's $84 million on the cap next year, but the years after that, it's 87 plus. So unless you want him to be the quarterback for like three more years, this is kind of the time to just take your medicine and move off of him. And I, I think that's what they're going to do. And I think, you know, they kind of paid a pretty hefty sum for Stidham to be the backup or seeing why now they may, you know, they may try to draft one of these mid first round quarterbacks like, yeah, Bo Nix may fall to him. You know, if Shador Sanders comes out, they may do that. 
or there I think they're definitely a candidate to trade for a veteran or even Justin Fields. You know, I think the Broncos are definitely a candidate to try to move for us and bring in someone like Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, one of these kind of even Kyler Murray probably may be available. Not definitely, but maybe. And uh we may we we're gonna see Sean Payton kind of bring in his own guys. I think the Broncos, uh, this is a way too early take. I think the Broncos are gonna be good next year. Like, I mean, really good. Where I don't think they'll win the division, but if Kansas City doesn't get it together, they certainly might, you know. Uh, moving on, the Raiders. <laughs> it's kind of a fun story when the interim head coach comes in and, you know, they win some games. The team rallies around them for a little bit. Uh, I don't know that they should hire him as the head coach, although I think all the players want to. I think they have taken a couple big swings on coaches recently in John Gruden and Josh McDaniels that just were disasters. So I think in that regard, they may be inclined to promote this interim head coach Pierce to be the, you know, the head coach next season. We'll just have to see outside of that. I don't think there's a ton of reason to be optimistic. You know, Jimmy G obviously wasn't the answer at quarterback. So they're looking for the quarterback Devontae Adams can't be happy there. And if they're, I think he's probably going to be somewhere else next season. You know, we'll have to kind of see, but I imagine he goes to a different team next season. And, uh, you know, they're probably, if things go well for the other teams, the Raiders could be back to winning five games next year and be in fourth place in that division is kind of what I think about the Raiders. They, they have a couple nice players, but they don't really have – the coach or the quarterback, which is what you usually need to really be a contender and kind of be in contention for winning the division. So I don't think they're, they have a lot of reason to move forward, optim, a lot of reason for optimism to move forward. And then lastly, let's spend some time on Kansas City. So Kansas City, two weeks in a row, and I don't think we got to do a podcast after one of these games. Two weeks in a row had some questionable calls, you would say, at the end. And I hate it when people blame the officials uh, for a loss. And I don't think that Kadarius Tony false start against the Packers or offsides was the sole reason they lost that game. I think it magnified the bigger issue at hand, which is Kelsey's no longer in his prime, which is sad. And a, a, a beloved player like that, People don't like to talk about it. You know, the same thing to give you a cross sports reference. Same thing's going on with Golden State. Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, not the same guys. Travis Kelsey's not the same guys. And last year, he was able to cover up a lot of flaws in the roster. He's not the same guy. And they don't have a true number one right now on the roster. But, you know, he was supposed to be able to fill that role. Obviously, he lost a step. Rasheed Rice looks like a nice player. Uh, I've been kind of arguing with some of my friends. I don't think he's a one. I think he's a good two in the NFL move forward. I don't, you know, we'll have to kind of see how he develops. Maybe he can turn into a one. Whether he's a one or not, you need another piece still. Because if he's your one or two, you still need another one or two, right? So I think that needs to be the first thing they address in the offseason. And they kind of tried last year. They were able to get by with Kelsey and some guys. Kelsey is kind of turning into just one of the guys, unfortunately. So now they need a big time weapon. I would go get T Higgins from Cincinnati. We talked about Devonte Adams. The only problem with that is his age and they kind of need a long-term solution. But, you know, if they were looking for kind of a, one year band aid or something like that. Devontae Adams would be awesome for a year there. Uh, and there's some first round receivers I think are going to be studs that are not Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr., one of the best prospects we've seen coming into the draft at any position in a few years. And the the other guys, you know, Odunze out of Washington, Malik Neighbors out of LSU, Keon Coleman out of Florida State. I think all those guys in Kansas City would be great. So I think they need to prioritize getting Patrick a real weapon. And that's the biggest issue in Kansas City. I Like I said, I think the officiating magnified that. But what I tell you all the time, all that stuff usually kind of evens out by the end of the games. And good teams 
win. And that's why it seems like the, the refs favor the teams that win in these kind of big games and big moments is because they're able to overcome the bad calls that they get. So we don't remember them as much. And that used to be Kansas city, I think. And now when Tony lines up off sides, they still had two shots at it, you know, two or three plays and they weren't able to capitalize, you know, and Mahomes threw a couple passes that got dropped on the next two plays. And if one of those gets caught, they go down, win the game. We forget that Tony was offsides, but now we remember that he was offsides. And I understand the frustration with the officials because it happened back to back weeks where they kind of, you know, it's like two obvious calls that went against them. Uh, but the truth is, if they were better and the offense was working, it wouldn't have mattered probably. And they would have been able to win those games anyway. So, like I said, all that stuff evens out. The good teams just find ways to overcome some bad calls, which just side note, the officiating has been terrible in the NFL this year. And like, we're even, it's hard to remember a year where the games were so inconsistently called as far as what you get week to week, what you get game to game, what you get play to play, how it's being officiated this year is just really frustrating for the players. And like you saw after Kadarius Tony lined up offsides, they called about five of them the next week just to kind of prove a point. It's like, man, just don't call it, man. It's like, just give them a warning. You know, it's like just frustrating, you know, and it's, you know, I remember in the Baltimore game versus San Francisco, there were a couple of times where I was like, no, that's a bad call. But the officials that favored both teams, you know, and it's like, it's just inconsistent week to week. So uh, Kansas city, I understand the frustration with the officials. I understand Patrick's frustration overall with that team, because it's like, he's been playing just eye test wise, a lot better than the numbers. And then all of a sudden you start seeing him turning it over and like holding on to the ball a little bit. It's because the offense line needs work and the guys aren't getting open. And, you know, uh, he doesn't trust his receivers. So he's kind of trying to be Superman now and make kind of trying a little too hard, which is resulting in some turnovers. And I understand the frustration. It's like, yeah, it's time to go get maybe a new offensive coordinator, definitely new weapons, you know, at least one big time piece to help him out on the offense in and you know I, I i they'll be fine moving forward i don't i think this is the year to get him for baltimore like i said i don't think kansas city i don't know that they're going to win a playoff game man it kind of depends on who they play but like this last week it certainly didn't look like a team that was going to win a playoff game to me you know what i mean i'll say that you n- I will never discount playoff Pat. Yeah. You know, it, like something it's playoffs are weird. Something like it triggers a different gear in people. It's because um, great players have that extra gear to get into LeBron, Kobe, Michael Jordan, Pat. Tom, yeah. All these really guys that you're like, okay, he's the best player in the league for an extended period of time. They all tend to have that extra gear and Pat definitely falls into it. I don't think you can write them off. And if you ask me, who do I think can go to Baltimore and win a playoff game? I'd probably say Kansas City above anybody else still, if I'm being honest, because they yeah. have Patrick Mahomes. It's like, can Patrick Mahomes, you know, carry the team for a game and have a pretty good defense and then, then beat Baltimore 21 to 17 or, you know, 20? It could happen. It could happen. I don't know that I'd bet on it, but that's – you can't write him off because he's so good. And I agree yeah. with that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But I do think that for this AFC West, of the past few years, everybody's been looking at it and like taking swings. You know, go get Russell Wilson, go get like make sure you're drafting Justin Herbert. Make sure that like, oh, we gotta we have the pieces and Devonte Adams and like a good defense led by Max Crosby, like all right, we just need Jimmy G to show up. And it, whereas the Chiefs haven't taken any of those big swings because they haven't needed to. And I think that now they need to. Um, we, we both talked about this, you know, towards the trade deadline and even in the off season, they probably should have went and got DeAndre Hopkins. If they had DeAndre Hopkins right now, 
they probably be just as good as anybody, you know? Yeah. And they probably should have went and got him because, you know, if D, if D hops your one and Rasheed Rice is your two, all of a sudden that's a pretty good re- group of receivers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And they they had a good opportunity. I think they just, you know, and there's was reason to believe it because they just won the Super Bowl without him. But, you know, I don't, I think they thought they probably didn't need him. And now it's kind of obviously working against them that they didn't do that. Well, the genius move of signing Patrick Mahomes to a long term contract means that his cap hit becomes way less significant, which allows them to go and get these these pieces that they need. That's why they're able to keep Chris Jones and so you know, but now like yeah. I said, it's time to go get T. Higgins or draft a real prototype. A real number one. A yeah. real number one. Yeah. Go spend a first round pick on you know, if they could get Odunze, I love Odunze. But even the leak neighbors, I think, be a great fit with Patrick Mahomes and Keon Coleman. Admittedly, I hadn't watched as much because Florida State's not as interesting. But uh, supposedly, he's supposed he's supposed to be like George Pickens' talent, but more focused, which is sounds good on paper at least. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's, what he's, get a little, that's what he's supposed to be like. So. You know, they, they go draft a real one, have Rasheed Rice be the two, I think, and all of a sudden. They're probably awesome again next year. And probably this year looks like a blip. And it's like, oh, what happened in 2023 where Pat was not playing well? It's like, oh, they didn't have any receivers. There you go. You know, it's like, yep. no, don't get one. It's like, should be should be better. Should year. be fine. Yeah. Well, um, so I have a concert that's coming up. And this is going on the long side. And I don't want to short our NFC rundown. Sure. So I'm going to make the co-executive decision to say, we probably covered enough for th- for this one. Yeah. There will be another one coming out pretty soon. It might be re- recorded while I'm in Ireland, which could be fun. Right. Good. We'll do we'll do the NFC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank every uh, you, t- you thank everybody. You're the one that always does that. We we appreciate y'all listening. We're sorry we took such an extended pause from doing these. You know, again, want to I hope everyone had a, a wonderful holiday, you know, enjoy New Year's Eve, enjoy these bowl games. And like I said, we'll, me and Alex will try to get the AFC out as quick as we can or the NFC out as quick as we can, because NFC just about as interesting as anything. And we there was some stuff that we're not going to get to today that I definitely want to talk about. So uh, we'll see everybody soon. We appreciate all y'all and tune in. for Boomer the- Sooner. Boomer Sooner. That's right. <laughs>